right. All right. Good afternoon, late afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the first DNS op session for this IETF. I'm Tim, that's Suzanne, that's Benno. So we'll get going on this. So. Oh, I don't see him. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, Warren's our AD. He's out. I saw him because he just asked me about something. Um, Paul's doing minutes. And Paul had a request that if there's not a lot of mic lines, if you could use this one so he can get all the name tags. And if there are a lot of discussions, then, well, that's just good times. Um, and Dan, who, there's somebody who's doing Jabber Scribes? Up oh, there he is. Thank you, Mr. York. So you know the note well. It's early in the ITF. This is the latest one. So whatever you say, please pay attention to it. The blue sheets are going around. Please fill those in. This is the only the hour session, so it's going to be pretty short. We'll keep things to a minimum. Um, we've got an update on the, on the current work. We've got some hackathon updates and some other current working group business. So, because some notes tomorrow afternoon, if you're looking for a good time, there's the um, applications doing DNS, BOF, ADD. So promise to be excitement. So it's right after lunch. So, so non browser you know, as you can well imagine, this will be good. So lots of good discussion in there. So just giving you a heads up on that. Um, there's a draft in the int area that came to our attention on provisioning domains. And the terminology is a little different. You know, everybody uses overloads the word domain a lot. But it's in this working group last call. And it's about doing stuff over multiple interfaces. And it's it's definitely, there is some relevance there, and it's sort of like that stub to resolver problem where the this, this stub has to sort of keep track of what domain is doing, what, what interface is doing what, basically. So this seems to be big in the mobile world and also v6 with mobile stuff going on. So, of course, this happened today, the RTF workshop. Um, but tomorrow afternoon during the open meeting, there'll be there, a good discussion on understanding the role of registrars in DNSSEC deployment and so that was a, a hot talk so you guys should pay attention to that moving on to the documents updates so we've got the algorithm update since last meeting and the capture format's been in oh, it's been in auth 48 for like a year now um, <laughs> it's slowly making its way so they've gotten all the references sorted out and I think they finally you and Sarah finally sort of nailed everything down so um, but it's been a long one for them so, so we have three things, we're well, actually a couple things, more than three things in working group last call. The no response draft, which had a lot of discussion for a while and it's kind of gone silent, but with all the flag day conversations, you know, since everybody's getting their own flag day now, I feel that it's time to sort of put this to working group last call. So folks, send comments to the list, approve a publication, don't approve it, you have comments. Um, I think they've done a great job of cleaning it up. Mark's been patient with me, so I appreciate that. Um, so please, we'd like to hear some stuff about that. Even if you want to get up in the mic line and just yell about it. I think it's, you know, this is the time. Um, 2845 biz, finally. We finally got this through working group last call. I think this started in Prague two summers ago. And um, it's, it's, it's done the right updates to fix the TIG SIG problem. So again, that one's ready to, you know, please send some comments about that. Um, sort of stale. It's, it's working in group last call until tomorrow, until the 23rd. So um, we definitely want to hear about that. And there's one more. Yes, extended error. And this is partially my fault. I need to wrangle the authors a little more on that. There are some comments we need to get sort of fixed up. And then there was a discussion about the IANA registry is not really documented in the current draft, and it probably needs to be. Wes is looking sort of confused. Um, and so that sort of came up, but oh, please correct me. Yeah, uh, so Warren and I actually met a month ago or so and, and worked through the R code missing number of bits issue. Got it all done, and then an hour before the deadline, of course, I finally got around to submitting it without checking, say, some of the other points in the document that listed the wrong number of bits and things like that. So I apologize for that. That's my fault. 
Um, there is an IANA registry um, section. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, there has been for a long time, and, and uh, using current boilerplate text, if I recall, too. But I need to go back and double check that it matches. Okay. I'm pretty sure it does. And, and I believe I think Mr. Eastlake had some comments that were still sitting out there in my inbox. Yeah. Um, a, a brief reminder, mention your name on the mic. Yeah. Thank Wes you. Hardiker. I'm Wes Hardiker. Wes Hardiker from ISI. Um, yes, there are other outstanding comments. We wanted to hit the R code one because that seemed like the biggest, and I wanted especially the implementers that have started tinkering with it. Uh, go look. We did change the packet format, so unfortunately it had to be done. So go look at that. But the other comments are more minor in our desk text changes. Okay. So I'll try and get that out in the next couple of weeks. Cool. Thank you. So, and that's sort of my meeting to wrangle you, you authors about that. So um, you'll see here from me soon. Yeah, with respect to the IANA registry specifically, um, I think it was me that flagged that. And I think um, there was some question. One of the things I, I was hoping people will pay attention to when reviewing this document is whether the extension mechanism proposed and the policy on the IANA registry is is, is optimizing the usefulness of, of, of the, the, the document and the mechanism. And the reason I'm looking back is because this, this fancy monitor here is not working, so I have no idea why. A um, couple things in call for adoption, the uh, Dina server cookies, actually we believe that has wrapped up and should be adopted. Um, and then the Yang model, that's in, going through some interesting discussions and kind of understand where things are going on that. So. Um, those will wrap up here pretty soon. And then we have some updates on some current stuff. So um, Schumann sent us this about the multi-provider DNSSEC. They've made some changes to it. They've added some sections. And actually, looks like they've cleaned up some stuff. You know, they've, And from looking at the updates and looking at it and talking, it does seem like it's getting close to working group last call. We'd like some folks to review it. But it's getting a lot more discussion, especially among the vendors and stuff, about how to do in a sec across multiple providers. So I appreciate that. Um, so all TLD. So one of the authors came to us and said, hey, we think this is still useful. We want to know if the working group wants to work on this. Um, we have, you know, we, we, if we, you know, we're not, you know, we felt that we're not sure if the working group actually has the energy to sort of discuss namespaces, because it sort of turns into not really DNS, but more architecture kind of discussions. Um, so, you know, if we feel that we get a lot of feedback, like, oh, yes, we want to discuss this and kind of beat this down some more, our suggestion, we thought about this, and um, we feel that this would be a great document to send to the internet area and send it through the general area and have the ADs basically shepherd it. Because it's a, it's a standards track. It discusses, you know, it's either application or internet. I said, our, our, I said an application. They said internet. Um, but have it through the general area and have it discussed that way. And then you can still get the standards track, which we feel, which is what the ISG is basically trying to get us to do anyway. And that'll still get the proposed standard, and that's better than doing AD sponsored, for example. So, now I haven't told the NTPs this, but you know, <laughs> it's like surprise. Um, but because I, I do think, if you think about sort of TLD space, it's it's more. I think it's more in that area. So. Than it is, you know, sort of in the it's sort of an ops area sort of thing. Um, it get, you know, we can have a former AD stand up to the mic and tell us, you know, I'm sure there's one back there, sort of hiding in the corner. So this one, oh great, yes, moving DLV to historic. This is fantastic. So, oh, sorry, Mr. Sullivan. Hi, my name is Andrew Sullivan, and I work for the Internet Society, but I don't speak for them right now. Uh, on the previous item, if this working group can't come to agreement that this is a good idea or a bad idea, and you send yep. this off to, say, the gen area, my prediction is that they're going to say, I wonder what the DNS op we need yeah. about that. <laughs> um, and That's which is true. So, so this may be an opportunity to prove that we can do routing loops in the IETF itself. Um, <laughs> but but are, are you sure that you actually want that problem? I, you know, I don't know what problem I want. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and and I want the group to tell us what problem to give us, right? Okay. You know, does the group want us to sort of chase this, you know, chase, and, and I think if we, you know, I don't think they have the energy for it, you know, maybe they do, and maybe I'm going to be shocked, um, but, you know, I'm thinking of how can we, how can it be moved forward, because we've been asked to move it forward, 
And if we can't get the energy here, how can we do it? Or maybe it doesn't get, it just, it dies a slow death that, you know. Well, I mean, this would not be the first thing ever to die a slow death. No, that no. Saw. So, uh, I, I mean, I, I guess what I'm suggesting, and, you know, my name was, I don't know if it still is, but it was on this at one point. Um, uh, my, my, my feeling is that it would be wise for us to make the decision, um, you know, to, to put this to bed or to death. Yep. Um, uh, you know, sort of expeditiously, if that's what we actually plan to do, because I'm I'm just nervous that what's going to happen is we're going to spend another spin. Uh, yes. We're going to send this to the Genaria list. I don't know if you've been reading the Genaria list anytime recently, but I'm not sure that this is going to attract a whole lot of attention there. So no, thank, no, that's a very good point. So, um, Jared, uh, Jared Mach Akamai, uh, just following on what he said. When we, when we have routing loops, actually in backbones, eventually TTL expires and it yeah. drops on the floor. <laughs> that, that, that actually may be the most appropriate solution here. Yeah. Is just drop this. So, follow up. Um, I'm also a little uncomfortable with continuing with this document, not for any of the content of it, but uh, because when this whole mess happened with Tor and their special domains, uh, we we sort of froze all new special domains so that we wouldn't get more people trying to quickly sneak in more of these uh, yeah. proposals. And now we're coming up with our own proposals to do this. So it's, it feels a little weird to me to continue this document. No, it, it does. And I think one of the conversations... There was, there was a slightly different history of that. Yeah, was we probably, you know, like somebody, we need a TLD for NX domain, we need a TLD for, you know, answerable domains, et cetera, et cetera, which seems like, wow, that's, you know, that's lots of TLDs, right? Um, so yes, okay, but very good point. If I could. Uh, oh yeah. Could. Uh, what we did um, was step back from delegating new special use names until we had done some other substantive work in the working group, which we did with the problem statement document, which is now RFC. Something, something. Um, and we asked for further guidance from the ISG because we said we didn't know how to proceed beyond the problem statement listing the issues. One of the things that was suggested that we go back to was this document which actually predated the problem statement RFC. Another, another document we were asked to consider was a draft that I wrote and that the working group was not interested in taking up. So it's not that we stopped and then, and then proposed our own change to the registry. If we want to, if we want to advance this document, we can. That's Herdiker, I say, uh, no hats, I think. Um, I, I, the reason that this document has stumbled so much in this group is that we can't come to some decisions that turned out to be hard, right? They're, they're not easy. Uh, some of them are political, some of them are technical, whether we delegate it signed or unsigned, uh, you know, how you deal all of that. Um, that makes it hard and it makes us not want to do it because we can't necessarily come to agreement. I think, on the other hand, if you look at the side of, is it needed, uh, there's been a lot of community members outside the IETF, I don't mind, I don't say inside the IETF, we have a solution, but there's a lot of other people that have indicated a high level of frustration for not having something like this in a delegated play space of their own. And, and granted, I hate first come, first serve, that's a horrible answer to anything, but uh, if they're if they're unable to to register themselves in a global namespace, that's problematic, and I don't know why they can't use URNs either, but they don't. Um, so if we're unwilling to solve this problem, and the world thinks that this is a problem, we're at an odd space. So, Warren Kamari with no hats other than an author, <clears throat> quickly responding to what uh, Paul Voda said. Much of the purpose was, of this was actually to sort of corral stuff like .onion off in its own place. Um, but I think that both myself, and I haven't spoken to my co-author, but I think both of us are fine if this dies. We just don't know what the working group wants. It was really interested at one point, if they no longer are. But it would be nice to know. I suspect that if we were to send it to Gen or Int or anywhere else, they would say, this looks remarkably DNS-ish. Why don't we send it to DNS up? DNS up? And that would be sad. Um, I am Paul Dixie. Uh, I guess no hats. I don't come to these meetings very often, and so I'm uh, I'm behind on my procedural knowledge. But um, first, I want to agree with Wes. 
something like this is kind of needed, just like 1918 was kind of needed. Uh, and, and that's my personal view. But my professional view is that if we're going to do nothing, we should find a way to record the road not taken and the reasons we didn't take it so that people who are tempted to throw it back at us can actually look at a negative RFC uh, that says, don't do this and this is why. And they'll know that that is the answer they would get from the NSOP rather than not being able to find some answer. I don't know if there's such a thing as a negative RFC, but this would be a call for one. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. I Personally, I think something like this probably is needed, but I'm not sure how to go about it. And I think uh, Paul is right. We should record it either way, right? We need to sort of lay the path out for people moving forward. So, um, so, so maybe, oh, sure. <laughs> we'll talk to you. Okay, how's that? <laughs> um, so maybe something slightly more, so obsolete DLV, I, every, everything was positive about this. I, we heard no negative feedback at all. So. We did our little research and figured out there's several different ways to do it, figured out the right process, which kind of put the put the little bit of onus on the working group, but not much, and then shoved it all on the AD, which was like, hey, sounds great to us. Um, so by the, pretty much by the end of ITF, I hope to get any comments, sort of editorial comments about it. I believe it's all very, it, Matthias did a great job on sort of putting it all together. And, and then at that point, we'll do some data tracker stuff and we'll send it over to Warren and we'll start that process to move everything to historic. So um, anybody have any sort of feedback on that, that would be great. But the document is simple, straightforward, well, well written. Um, can't, say anything, can't say anything but good stuff about it. So, and we get rid of the LV, right? That's, I think that's a good day. So, TCP requirements, um, they did a version recently and it looks like we've, I went through the document, it looks like they've covered all the to-dos and the missing things that they were sort of trying to fill in. And it's getting, we feel it's pretty close to working group last call. So we'd like to get a little bit review and we'll probably do that here sometime this summer. Um, the next one is Zone Digest. Yep, another one of Duane's. And the last update introduced, a, you know, some, a bigger change than sort of, you know, and we haven't heard much comments on that but that's in the same place. We feel that's really ready for working group last call as well, once we hear some good reviews and things of that nature. And then 7816 biz, actually I don't know what's going on with that. We have to go figure that out. Um, so. Is that it? Yep, so what else we're working on? Stuff's in the data tracker. We have things in GitHub. Um, the links are in there. So today the agenda, because it's only an hour, um, actually, the first thing is the hackathon results. Uh, Willem's going to be doing those. And then he's going to give us an update on the server cookies. And then Paul's going to talk about 7606biz, which we first thought was ready for working group last call, but now it's not. He's got a couple things to fix. And then the, the latest terminology spin. So, and then most of the big stuff is for tomorrow because this is a short meeting. So I think that's it. Any other comments, things to say? Then we'll get to it then. Willem? Yeah, it works. Okay. So these are the results of the uh, DNS track at the hackathon held last weekend. Uh, we had a gallimaufry of uh, 17 uh, eclectic DNS hackers working on uh, 10 projects, uh, which uh, could roughly be divided in uh, four teams. One was about uh, DNS privacy, one about uh, DNS uh, support for specific uh, network environments, uh, provisioning, and miscellaneous with only one project in it. So uh, we had uh, uh, Palavi Ares and Han Tsang work on uh, XOT, which is a zone transfer over TLS. They uh, worked on a uh, 
client implementation for it in the uh, DNS Java library. Petr Spatzek uh, created a uh, Do proxy with a fast CGI interface so that it can be used with any web server. And we had Rittles preparing a bind line for dot and do. Then the, the uh, DNS for uh, specific uh, network environments. Uh, Stefan Bortsmeyer, he uh, already implemented earlier the resource record type for the uh, identifier locator uh, network uh, protocol. Uh, but a name server or a resolver actually needs to do some additional processing to make that uh, work. And uh, so he worked on that. Yeah, and he had a working implementation in NOT and a work in progress in for Unbound. Uh, Mark Andrews had uh, worked on uh, translating. Uh, IPv4 addresses into IPv6 prefixes for uh, DNS 6.4, not 6.4 uh, environment for a bind line. So if you download the slides and you want to try out some of the hacks, there's a link to the uh, uh, GitLab repository with the patches so that you can patch bind line and try it out for yourself. Uh, DNS provisioning. So I worked with uh, Andre and Witold and uh, remote participant Peter Lexis on DNS cookies interoperability. I'm going to tell you a bit more about it uh, later on. Um, yeah, this is also interesting. Uh, Mark Andrews and Tim Bottenberg uh, worked on uh, the DNS timeout resource record. It's a resource record for provisioning uh, a DNS zone with uh, DNS updates uh, with resource records that have a uh, expiry time. And uh, so here again are the uh, uh, references to the uh, ISC GitLab, which uh, contain these uh, patches. Oh, yeah, and finally, uh, my colleague Rolf Dolmans worked on HTTP SVC, which is uh, alternative for a name, I suppose. Uh, suppose. Uh, in, instead of that the name server provides the uh, dynamic uh, uh, addresses for the, uh, a name at the apex, the work is done. Uh, in the browser or the, the, the program that resolves the HTTPS URL by uh, following the, uh, uh, the references mentioned by the uh, HTTPS SVC uh, resource record. And finally, in the category uh, miscellaneous, we had a YAML output from Dick and Delph by Evan Hunt and Paul Hoffman. So Evan first wanted to implement, uh, uh, or he was thinking about implementing JSON output in the uh, RFC 8427 uh, format for DNS, but he would he preferred to output in YAML because it's more readable. And he discussed this with Paul, who is the main author of the JSON format. Uh, and uh, Paul agreed. And this is now already used in Paul's uh, RSSEC proof of concept root server management framework for latency and resilience. So that's uh, the results of the hackathons. We had lots of uh, interoperability and also between the different yeah. network groups. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good to see that existing and new work is being uh, implemented in uh, different pieces of software and from prototype proof of concept to uh, to production code thanks um, next
Yes, of Please go ahead. Yeah, for the uh, DNS uh, server cookies. Yeah. <laughs> DNS server cookies, that's right. Um, so DNS uh, server cookies are a uh, DNS native protection mechanism against uh, amplification attacks. Uh, but to be helpful, it needs to be implemented everywhere. And uh, so multi-vendor cooperation is uh, desirable. Uh, this is uh, how they work. If a, a client creates a uh, cookie, which is more or less a, a nonce actually, sends it to the uh, server, so the client is a resolver, and the server here is an authoritative name server. Name server creates a server cookie based on the client cookie, sends that back to the client, and then later on the client returns its own cookie plus the server cookie to uh, the same server, and the server can recognize that this server cookie can only be baked by itself because it's also uh, using a uh, server secret to uh, make the cookie, and uh, so it knows that. The client is a returning client, and it's not a spoofed uh, source IP address. So, um, and this is good because authoritatives can then, if they see the cookie is correct, provide larger answers or uh, and do not do response rate limiting. So here's the problem uh, that we had before the DNS cookies. Uh, the the recipes that were used by the servers to bake the cookies uh, were different so that uh, if a cookie was made by bind mine so to say it was not uh, not resolved did not like that cookie and uh, disposed of it so the uh, we had a uh, draft to uh, uh, make sure that cookies were made with the same recipe and that all the different uh, DNS servers would uh, make the cookies in the same way. And we had a hackathon project um, at the ITF 104 in Prague and managed to have interoperable uh, server cookies between uh, Bind9, PowerDNS, NSD, not DNS, and Unbound. And uh, after that success, uh, we had a merger with uh, a draft from uh, Donald Eastlake and uh, Mark Andrews that were also addressing the problem with the uh, existing uh, cookies. Um, uh, the uh, changes that we did to the new draft were that uh, uh, a fix of a mistake, server cookies needed to be based on not just the client cookie, but also the client IP address. Uh, we use only SIP hash 2.4 for the uh, algorithm. Um, we created the IANA sub registry uh, for uh, different versions or different recipes to make uh, cookies. And we, uh, in the draft, we had some operator advice on server secret rollover and on uh, yeah, implementation advice on how to facilitate smooth rollovers uh, and a appendix with test factors so different implementations can check if the uh, the recipe is the same as the one described in the draft so uh, last hackathon we uh, had again a, uh, a new round of implementing uh, DNS server cookies with this uh, uh, new recipe and had interoperability testing uh, between Bind9, PowerDNS, NSD, and Inbound, which was uh, successful. Um, another thing that came from the hackathon is that in the draft it um, stated that the client cookie, or it recommends that the client cookie is generated from the client IP address, but this is uh, quite impractical to implement. So the, the reason for this is IPv6 privacy extensions. So uh, what you would like to avoid is that a cookie reveals the, the, the same source, so to say, if the IP, 
the source IP address changes. Um, but there's no easy way to do this for UDP, a UDP socket. It's, it's stateless. If you cre create it, it does not have a source IP address uh, yet, only after it's sent out, and then it's too late. Thus, we want to modify this text a little bit to um, recommend for resolvers to not use the uh, client IP address when sending out or when creating cookies, but uh, recommend for step resolvers to indeed uh, um, use the client IP address because those are the parties that uh, benefit the most from the privacy extensions as well. So that's the, the status. Um, yeah, there was a uh, call for uh, adoption, which finished last Saturday. Indeed. Yeah. So, so it's a working group, working group document right now. And um, it, it's a pretty uh, straightforward draft. Yeah. Uh, it repairs, uh, it, it, it repairs an, an omission in the original Dennis Cookie draft, uh, RFC. Um, so, thank you for the implementations, the, the interop tests. So, we would actually, we, two days ago, we wanted to go straight for a working group last call, but I understand the authors want to straighten out some issues. But it's also for the room to pay attention on this document because it's already very good, very well shaped. Uh, we want to put, actually, yeah, I, so what we want to do now is uh, uh, update this text on creating the client cookies yeah. and then submit it to, to make it a worker. Uh, uh, draft. Yeah. And then perhaps create uh, production quality implementations between all the different vendors and ask a operator that uses Encast mm -hmm. to test if it's Excellent. working for them and then, yeah. It's Thank finished, you. I think. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions, comments? No? Thank you. Thank you, Will. Now, let's give applause. <laughs> Starting new tradition. This is where the part where you start what? Start getting feedback. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, I think I'll look this way. That's well, still my, thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's an inconvenience. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. okay. Um, so you're probably going to be out in time because both this and the next one will probably be fairly short. So as hopefully everyone is familiar, this isn't going to work with me turning around. Um, uh, Warren and I are writing 7706 bis. We've talked about it before. Um, it's still in process, but we're getting close. We're still interested in stuff. Next slide, please. Um, so it's getting close to done, but it is not done done. And um, uh, what we have done, which everybody asked for, the obvious stuff is we updated the examples from 7706 uh, because now we have a bunch of implementations and common software. So that we think is done, and we would love people to take a look at the examples. Um, but uh, we actually have some to-dos that we left in that we haven't to done, so we need to do those. Um, one of them is that uh, 7706, due to uh, working group discussion leading to 7706, um, we didn't put the use cases in really well, and they have now changed since 7706, so we need to put those in and have them discussed on the list. We can put words in. If there's silence on the list, I'm going to take that as no one's reading the list because I know a lot of people cared about this when we did 7706. So you're still going to care about it now. And I'm talking to people in the room who are not just Andrew Sullivan. Um, well, I mean, I think a lot of people remember Andrew was the one who got up to the mic and was very active on the list for 7706. But a lot of people are like, yeah, what he said, or no, I disagree. So. There may be that much here, and that's okay. Getting the use cases correct in this document is going to be very important for people reading it five and ten years later because, in fact, the way that the root zone happens changes over time. And 
people need to understand why were we talking about it in a certain way in 2019 or 2020, depending. Um, and we also have to um, explain more exactly why are we here on this. So not just the use cases, but what got us to this point. So again, Warren and I will put words in, we'll do a new draft, but we do expect the working group to actually look at it. I mean, if everyone only wants to do a working group last call, that's fine, but generally working group last call is mostly useful for, we've already looked at it and we think it's pretty done. And I think these two might be a little bit um, useful for people to look at. So, um, and then we also have to go through and really do a careful comparison with 7706 so that the section that says changes from 7706 is actually complete. Last slide. Um, so we'll have, I haven't told Warren this, but we will have another draft um, by the end of August. Nod your head yes, that's a month from now. Okay, so a scrunched up face with a nodding yes. So we will most likely get um, a draft before the end of, of August and then we'll ask for a working group last call. But if, what? No. <laughs> Warren's saying end of July, and I'm saying no, because I also have a life. Um, <laughs> and I would like to go home for that life. So, um, but, you know, again, we're not in a rush, so we're not like, oh, we need to have this through at a certain time. So we want lots of review, but we're getting close-ish. Okay? okay. Question? Hi, uh, Puneet from Google Public PNS. So I, there's a restriction in the draft which says that the uh, the root server is only accessible locally. Yes, that's so also is, in the title. Right, which is fine if you're running a small scale setup, but if you're running a cloud scale resolver, then everything's not gonna be on the same machine. So is there some way to word that into the document? Uh, are you saying that you want it worded where it doesn't have to be on the same machine or to say we know that there's that restriction? So I think wording so that it doesn't have to be on the same machine. I think the main point you're trying to get to is like you want to limit access to the server. I think if we say that explicitly and allow running on a non-local... Uh, can you go server. back one slide? Yep. So the make the use cases explicit, we're going to have that conversation then. I was hoping that no one would say that, but since you have, that wording will cause this. So, okay. so it, it's not as simple as saying, oh, let's just loosen this up, because that's why 7706 actually said it has to run on localhost. We've expanded it off of running on localhost, but now saying, oh, it needs to be close-ish, yeah, that may not work. So we'll have that discussion. All right, thanks. Giovanni said in. Uh, Paul, one clarifying question. I'm not sure if it's covered in 7706 uh, or you intend to cover in here, uh, but if you get like the roots on, uh, the TLDs there have a fixed and S record uh, fixed TTL. Actually, I, the, there's a weird echo. I'm not understanding. All right. Um, can you hear better now? Yeah, I think All so. Right. Um, so, my question is if you run this locally or in your environment there, and every record under the root zone, the NS records have a TTL of two days, but if you ask child delegation, you can have a different TTL value. So if your clients connect to your server, I'm not sure if it's covered in this draft, I don't think it is, but, or 7706, but which TTL are you gonna return to your client? The one in the root zone or the one in the child delegation? We explicitly don't say how to run your authoritative server. So if you run an authoritative server that munges TTLs or lies or whatever, that's your fault. Yeah, but like if my client connected, oh, you want to take that? Yes. He and I've gone over this a bunch of times. <laughs> uh, Wes Hardiker, so I, uh, ISI, so I created the local root project at ISI, and, and one important thing to understand about a local copy of the root and the way that 7706 works. <laughs> Thank you, Warren. <laughs> Is that really all you came up here for? <laughs> um, one, one important concept of how the local route or, or the hyperlocal route or 7706 works is that it only answers authoritatively on the address for, as if it was the root server. So when it is answering for a TLD and it's saying, you need to, here's the NS record set for the TLD 
properly behaving resolvers will then go ask the TLD what they think things should be. And if the TTLs vary, it should be, and, and your paper nicely proves that that's not always the case, <laughs> but it should be that you believe the child's values as authoritative. Um, a different, the same result, but a different way to answer that is to say, this is no more authoritative than you asking an actual root server. So you will do exactly what you would have done. Exactly, yeah. yes. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Good. Um, so not for this next version, but for the version after. Oh, sorry, Bonit offered or suggested another use case. Are you open for more use cases? Oh, from sure, the absolutely. So yeah. I will okay. write up some of the use case stuff, or Warren and I will write up soon, yeah. and um, then we will ask for discussion on that. Okay. And if I didn't get it the way that Puneet asked for or whatever, or others, that will come around. And there have been other people who have asked for that, um, where local, <laughs> the definition of local stretches well beyond what I would want. And I've said no on that, but maybe we can have something closer to local. Thank you. Oh, and we're still good. Okay. Yeah. So this one hopefully will be even shorter. Um, so I have mentioned this at a previous one, but a bunch of people have questions or, or have been wanting to, have, to not refer to technologies we're working on now or have worked on in the past by their draft name and by their RFC number. So uh, terminology comes up. And so this is a draft with very limited updates to the terminology document just for these. Next slide. So, oh, that came out smaller than I want, but I think still readable. This just is those six terms. At this point, the draft is just those six terms. And um, the reason why it's just those six terms is that seems to be all of the terms that people have sort of half agreed on in this space. Um, it's not planned to be, let's open up terminology for all the other, new terminology, it's just these. And these terms are not fixed in stone. I mean, this is a request to have this become a working group document. People might want to change the names, they might want to change the abbreviations, that's all fine. But the idea is to have those in a document from here. Next slide. Yeah. You want to take questions now or just finish the presentation? Do I want to? Of, uh, take the question? No, 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 the next slide is basically, okay. so this is all we want to do. Right. Now we can have all of them. George A.P. Nick, I say this every time you come up with the dictionary. The dictionary is good, but it will never be finished. You have to ship it. You have to stop accepting changes, which you just said. For the love of God, just just ship it. I, yeah. I disagree. I think it should be a working group document. I you think, think it should remain open? I'm sorry? You think it should remain open? It's not remaining open. No, no, no. The RFC is already done. These are additions to... How, you're going to come back in the room with another three in a year's time, again and again and again, because we're well, wait, always going to make gone up past new words. my intended retirement date with that third again. So I hope you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, Paul, just can, you, can, can you go back one slide? Sure. So these are the ones that are in the current version of the draft before the working group has adopted it, if, if it's going to get adopted. Right. So to me, these all seem fine, except the third one, which is uh, DO53. Um, because I'm really confused, because if, if we're calling DNS DO53, then we should call DNS over TLS, DO53 over TLS. So we could do that. So far, people have used these terms in other drafts, so I thought that they were OK, but we can change them. Mm, excuse me, Brian Dixon, uh, GoDaddy. For the very last one, ADD, I'm not sure whether I even want to open up this can of worms, but the last D in that, maybe we should put a little asterisk to say any of those first four, T TLS, DOH, 53, or whatever, i.e., we don't want to necessarily for ADD exclude 53. Okay, so that's a discuss. Oh, great! Yeah. You turned it on yeah. and everything. Um, <laughs> thank you. 
Now it's blinding me, but that's okay as well. <laughs> so we might, we might not. I think that that's a reasonable working group discussion. I would suggest we don't do to add new terms that have characters like an asterisk in them. But yeah. Well, uh, Giovanni, um, 253, you mean like only UDP? What about DCP? Nope. Nope. Um, part 53 either. It says that explicitly. Because, because RFC 1034 and 1035 say that explicitly as well. Yeah. Tim Wisinski, I literally thought that third one, and I guess I've been doing too much in the wrong place, was DNS over Route 53. So, <laughs> so that obviously means I'm doing, I'm living the wrong life. Right, and so other people in the room would, would want us to also add DO8, which I don't want to do. <laughs> Uh, Jim Reid, um, I think these definitions you've got there are fine, Paul, as they are, and I disagree with the suggestion that we should have ADD with an asterisk associated with it. The ITF has already said that the ADD list is applications doing the DNS. We should just stick with that and not mess around with it or put qualifiers or, or addendas to it. Leave it as is. Um, because, quite frankly, if going to what George Michael said at the beginning, unless you want me to come up a couple years now when there's another one, if we restrict it now, you know, let's not do that. Yeah, I think we should try and get a document out the door, Paul. Close this thing down, go and keep it alive forever. Um, Stefan Bartsmeyer. Yeah. I have a reservation about the last one, add. Uh, first, uh, add is the only one which is not defined in the RFC. All the rest are protocols clearly defined with the RFC. Add is a vague concept. Uh, second, uh, the definition of what is an application, what is a system, can be clear in some cases. For, in Unix, for instance, it's quite clear, but it can be different in other systems. And third, I observe that currently we have an add mailing list. The name comes from application doing DNS. And the list is going in many, many directions, most of them unrelated to application doing DNS. We will talk about that at the buff tomorrow. But today, it seems to me that unlike the others, add is very mm, cloudy. Okay. So this is just the list. The draft actually has the definitions. If the definition seems too scoogey for you, I agree, we should nail it down. And if it doesn't seem like we can nail it down, I think it's reasonable to take it out. It's just that many people have been using that because of the problem where people say, Doe is bad because of X, and X would apply just as easily if an application was doing DOT. So, you know, ADD, the whole idea was, it's the A that's important here, not, not the other two. If we can get that right, great. And if we can't get it right, we should not add it to, to the terminology list. I agree. OK. Thank you. Uh, yeah, before leaving, not answering Mike, uh, George Michael's question, uh, but we still have to decide is a DNS op working group document or not. Right. So yeah, no, definitely this is a working, call for adoption. Working, yeah. yeah. I, um, I think I said that on the last slide, didn't I? Oh, maybe I didn't. No, I didn't no, even say no. that. I'm sorry. I, no. I meant to yeah. because I thought that was what this was about, is that certainly yeah. anyone updating that RFC should be a working group discussion here, I think. Yeah. So it might as well be a working group list. But if people don't want it, that's fine. I, I, just, I just think that people are using these definitions enough yeah. where it would be good to actually have it, you know, be stated as updates the main document. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Okay. We did hear... Also the feedback from the room and we'll go to the mailing list for the yeah. okay thank you any we have business? any other business we have 10 minutes <laughs> something to entertain us otherwise um we will close this session here and open well the open the next dns op working group will be tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock in dj i if i'm correct Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Blue sheets. Yeah. Anybody who didn't sign the blue sheets, sign them. Where are the blue sheets, anyway? Oh, to the left or to the right? I. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, anybody who does have a blue sheet, hold it up so the people who haven't seen one will see one. I know that. I know you're out there somewhere. Thank you. Thank you.